Hello everyone. This is Heal and Well Set Self-Care Sundays. My name's Alyssa and this is Myofascial Release for Total Body Wellness. As we log on and we get set up here, I want to invite you to let me know where you're from and how you're feeling in your body today. Also, if you can help me validate that my tech is working well, please give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and you are getting set up. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you showing up and letting me be a part of your practice. <laughs> All right, well, every couple of weeks, every other week, Heal and Well Set have teamed up to offer this self-care Sunday series 30-minute classes taught by well-set instructors. These experiential classes are free, and it's a great way to get to know uh, the practices that are offer offered on WellSet's platform. If you're not familiar with WellSet, we are the first holistic digital uh, studio offering evidence-based practices and uh, in thousands of live and on-demand classes in the modalities of yoga, mindfulness, meditation, journaling, sound healing, acupressure, and more to help people manage stress, to reduce anxiety, to help shift their habits, and take care of the mind and body to feel more balanced. My name's Alyssa, and I am honored to be a part of WellSet's exceptional team of teachers. I am a certified yoga teacher and yoga tune-up instructor I help people connect with a more embodied state of being to discover effective tools for stress relief and self-care through yoga, movement, and myofascia release. The practice I'm sharing with you today is myofascia release. And if you're not sure what that means, myofascia release or myofascia refers to the muscle and our fascia, which are truly inseparable. The fascia is like a, a web that makes its way throughout the body from superficial to deep and everywhere in between. It provides the soft tissue scaffolding that connects, supports, and allows for the body's movement. When our fascia is healthy, it's aqueous and it's slippery and smooth and enables slide and glide of our interrelated tissues. When our fascia becomes dehydrated due to lack of movement or injury, etc., our tissues become more dense and we find that we feel tight and our range of motion is limited. Through the practice of myofascia release, we apply pressure with a therapy ball or a foam roller. And when we do that, we find that we can relieve tension patterning, we can increase the circulation in our tissues, as well as calm the nervous system. For our practice today, we'll just need one single ball. You can use a therapy ball, and that's what I would recommend, or you can use a tennis ball if that's what you have. You'll need to have access to a wall space, where you can practice there. And if you want to engage with some of these tools and practices on the floor, you'll also want to have access to a firm surface such as a yoga mat or a comfortable floor. To begin, I'd like us to take a moment to check in. And as we do so, you can find a comfortable seat or you might choose to stand. However you choose to arrive, I wanna encourage you to close your eyes or at least to soften your gaze. As we bring our attention inward, notice how you feel in your body, becoming aware of your breath and the way that you feel. Draw a deeper, fuller breath in. And when you exhale, allow for your shoulders to rest down away from your ears. Notice how you feel in your overall resting tone, the quality of your attention, the quality of your breath, and the areas that you might perceive in your body that are holding tension or stress. 
Now, if you had closed your eyes, I want to encourage you to open your eyes. And before we start with the therapy ball rolling or the myofascia release techniques, I want to remind you of a few important elements as we make our way through the practice. First, you can expect that when you use these tools, there are going to be some areas that feel amazing to roll along with. And there are going to be some areas that are a little bit tender to the touch. Remember that you are in control of the pressure that you're applying. And it doesn't have to be super intense to be effective. In other words, it doesn't have to hurt to work. Use your breath as a barometer or a measuring tool to help you gauge whether the pressure that you're applying is too much or perhaps it, that you can go a bit deeper. Also, keep yourself here in the present moment by using the breath as that anchor. You can always remove the therapy ball at any time. And I also want you to consider that this work is kind of like a conversation that you're having with your body. Listen, slow down, and respond honestly to the signals that your body sends to you. Okay, so I will continue to remind you of those elements as we make our way through the practice. And let's begin first by taking a look at the skeleton. I have my skeleton here to help us map out some of the bony landmarks that we're going to be rolling around. Note that as we map out these tissues, we're not rolling on the bone, we're navigating around the bone. And we're going to start with the chest, right near the collarbone. So take your fingertips, just start with your fingertips, and scroll your fingertips right underneath the clavicle right underneath your collarbone, moving the fingertips side to side. And when you move the fingertips side to side, get a sense of and a feel for the shape of your collarbone. You might go above the collarbone just a little bit and then down below it. And then feel also for the center sternal notch here. We don't want to roll in between the collarbones at the throat we are staying right below your collarbone area. So just stay there with the fingertips. And even this here, just using your fingertips is a great way to start to unravel some of the tension patterning to gain a greater sense of awareness and also to start to improve that circulation here. We typically tend to harbor a lot of tension in the shoulders and in the front of the chest as we live our lives out in front of ourselves, typing, texting, driving, doing all of these things in our everyday lives. So go ahead and take the ball and bring that ball underneath the palm of your hand. You wanna use the hand opposite the side that you're working with. And feel for scrolling that ball right underneath the collarbone, side to side. So here, if you visualize this on my skeleton model, you're just going back and forth beneath that collarbone area. This is also an important area related to total body wellness as we stimulate lymph, or this is where the lymph makes, it, makes its venous return, and we want to stimulate that cleansing system of the body here. As you go back and forth, allow yourself to slow down, to embody your body, and really connect with the sensory input that you're providing for these tissues. As you go back and forth, you wanna feel that the ball is staying right underneath that line of your clavicle. And with that ball underneath the line of the clavicle, you can touch into the head of the humerus or the upper arm bone and bring that ball back toward the center line. But again, never putting any direct pressure right at the throat. See a few of you continuing to log in. Thank you for joining me. This is myofascial release for total body wellness. As you go back and forth, I wanna encourage you to find one spot and press that ball in and just hold that ball kind of like a dial. And as you hold that ball like a dial, you dial it up and dial it down. So with this dialing action of turning it up 
turning it down, you're gathering up that connective tissue of your fascia and moving it in a way that helps to enhance the circulation here. And then again, going back and forth. Let's take this to the other side. And so you might take the opposite hand and start with your fingertips and just move back and forth. The fingertips scrolling right underneath that clavicle bone. And when you move that finger or your fingertips rather back and forth, truly get a sense of the shape of your collarbone. Your collarbone might be a little bit linear or it might be quite curvy or angular. Notice the shape of your collarbone so that when we start to roll with the ball, you travel right underneath that bony landmark. Now go ahead and bring the ball underneath the palm of your hand. Let that arm that's connected to the side that you're working on be slack and soft and move the ball back and forth, side to side. And when you move the ball back and forth, if you wanted to deepen the pressure here, you could do so by using the other hand. Or if you happen to have a block, which I didn't require you to bring to practice this morning, but if you had a block or a thick book, you could pin the ball between your chest and that book and hug that in. And then you move side to side. When you move back and forth, remember, to go slowly, to embody your body, and to be present with that felt sensation of the moment. Now reminding you about the importance of breath in this practice, it is your anchor to the present moment. And it also is that gauge of the tolerance that you have for the pressure that you're applying. If you find at any point that your breath has become short and shallow, or maybe you're holding your breath, be aware of that, perhaps reconnecting to a deeper breath. And if you can't connect with a deeper breath, I wanna encourage you to remove the ball as the pressure may be too deep. Now find a spot right here at the collarbone, anywhere along that line of that clavicle, press the ball in, kind of like you're holding a bit of a dial and give yourself a little bit of a spin, like you're turning up that dial, wrapping up that connective tissue and turn the dial down. You might feel that there's a sense of heat building up in this area, and that's fantastic as we're starting to improve the circulation here of both blood, fluids, and lymph. Then once again, going side to side, letting that arm that's connected to the side that you're work working on just to hang down and be soft. Discontinue there and let's move on to the shoulder. And when we move on to the shoulder, we're going to be using the wall space to target this area. We're going to start by putting the ball to the outside of the shoulder. And your action is to turn the torso toward the wall and away from the wall to get the ball to come to the front of the shoulder and to the back. So we wanna traverse along the whole real estate of this upper arm, right where your t-shirt cap sleeve would be. So if you can find your wall space, stepping back and take the ball and pin it to the wall. Let's start on your left side. And when the ball is pinned to the wall, you can walk your feet further away from the wall and let the arms hang down and be at rest. Now, the closer you keep your feet to the wall, the lighter the pressure will be. The further you walk your feet away from the wall, you're using more body weight, adding leverage, and allowing for deeper pressure. Remember that you're always in control of that pressure. Now go ahead and turn the torso toward the wall so the ball comes to the front of the shoulder, and you might use the opposite hand at the wall to give yourself some support. Then turn the torso away from the wall so the ball goes to the back of the shoulder. You might even touch that ball to the shoulder blade. Then turning the torso toward the wall and away from it. Now when you're working at the wall, you want to apply enough pressure to pin the ball to the wall. And if you're using a tennis ball, because of its 
uh, texture, it's a little bit fuzzy and sometimes slippery, you'll have to apply just a little bit more pressure to keep it there pinned to the wall. Now when you pin that ball to the wall and you're moving slowly toward the back of the shoulder, you might find a spot there that feels a little bit tender to the touch and pause and to be still. And then turn the torso toward the wall so the ball goes to the front of the shoulder and away. So stay here with this simple movement, bringing the ball to the front of the shoulder and to the back of the shoulder. So here, as you view it, you can see that the ball, if you were to imagine me at the wall, would be going toward the front and to the back. Now this is a great way to work with these tissues of your deltoid and all of those rotator cuff muscles underneath, allowing you to more easily adjust the pressure that you're applying. If you find a spot that feels particularly tender and you want to stay with that and lean into that, do so and perhaps walk your feet further away from the wall. And in that walking of the feet away from the wall, take a deep breath in and allow yourself to relax as you breathe out. And once more, turn the torso toward the wall to get the ball to go to the front of the shoulder, almost to the breast tissue, or excuse me, the chest tissue, staying away from breast tissue, and then bringing the ball to the back. Let's take this to the other side. So simply turn over to the other side and pin that ball to the wall staying with the ball at that upper portion of your shoulder that's just below this bony outcropping here of your shoulder. And as the ball is pinned right to the outside of the shoulder, start to turn the torso in and away from the wall once again, rolling that ball to the front of the shoulder. You might even feel that it pushes your shoulder back a little bit and turning the torso away from the wall so that the ball then rolls to your shoulder blade. Going back and forth here, you might find that you can perceive the texture of your tissues in your shoulder. You might find that the texture of a little rope or it might feel like you're going over a, a curb is quite tender. You can get right on that or just adjacent to it and pause and be still. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. And one more time, turning the torso toward the wall so the ball goes to the front of the shoulder and away from the ball, or excuse me, away from the wall so the ball goes to the back of your shoulder. The tension that we build up here in the shoulders has a ripple effect to the upper back and the neck as everything is truly connected. So if you find that you carry a lot of tension in your upper back and your neck, you'll want to spend some time relieving some tension patterning from your shoulders. Now we're taking it to the back of the body. And if you look here on Stan, demonstrating where it is that we are going to place the ball, most of us tend to carry an extraordinary amount of tension here in the upper back, and this tends to be a favorite place for people to work. I will show you how to do this at the wall, and I will also demonstrate how you can do this at the floor if you find that you can tolerate that deeper pressure. The position of the ball is to bring it so that it starts at that upper inside border of your shoulder blade. So if you imagine a backpack strap going over the top of your shoulder and then inward and down at an angle, it's that position where the ball is inward and down at an angle that we're going to place it. And we'll do both sides, of course. Now, when we do this at the wall, an easy way to apply that ball in position is to start from the technique that we just engaged with, the outside of the shoulder. Stepping back to the wall, you can pin the ball to the outside of the shoulder, high up close to that outer portion of the shoulder where you feel that bony structure. Then turn the torso away from the wall so that you get that ball to go over the shoulder blade and pin it between the upper back and the wall. 
Now to get a sense of that ball placement and that it's not on your shoulder blade, begin to make circles with your arm. This circle making is a great tool for assessing the ball placement as well as to start to introduce some different lines of pull and stretch in the connective tissue. As you make these circles, you should feel the shoulder blade moving freely. And then go ahead and let the arm come down. Maybe you rest your arm over the torso or just let the arm hang down by your side. Walk your feet further away from the wall. And in doing so, you feel that the pressure deepens here. Now go ahead and cross the arm over the torso, perhaps holding on to the opposite shoulder. And just lean your body weight over to that side. Remember, this doesn't have to be super intense to be effective. And truly, honestly, sometimes less is more. Right now, as you have the ball pinned between the upper back and the wall, you're simply rolling the body weight over to that side and away from it. Now that you've got the ball in place, another thing that you can employ here is to scroll the ball up and down to the inside border of the shoulder blade. If you have longer hair, you wanna get that out of the way. Then you dip your hips down so that the ball travels up and you straighten the knees so that the ball returns to its starting point. The action is to dip your hips down and lift your hips up, straightening the knee. Visualizing this here on Stan, the ball is now traveling up and down to that inside border of the shoulder blade. Now, if you would like to explore this technique at the floor, the pressure is going to be quite high or much higher at the floor than it is at the wall. If you come down to the floor, you may also want to have a pillow or a block nearby should you decide you want to modify the pressure just a little bit or to reduce the amount of pressure. When you come down to the floor, reclining, you take the ball and you bring it to that upper inner border of the shoulder blade, just pinning the ball underneath your upper back. You can use a block or you can use a pillow or a book underneath your head if you find that you want to reduce the amount of pressure. Then again, you start to make circles with the arm, just going around and getting a sense that your shoulder blade moves freely and that ball is positioned right in between the shoulder blade and the spine. To deepen that pressure, you'd let your head come back down to the floor. Then cross the arm over the torso and lean your body weight over to that side and make your way back to the center. Draping your knees and the body weight over to the side that you're working on and coming back to the center. So in essence, whether you're in that orientation of working at the wall or you are here on the floor, the instruction is quite similar. No matter if you're working at the wall or the floor, I want to encourage you to switch sides. In that switching of sides, you can start with that ball to the outside of the shoulder if that was helpful, and turning the torso away from the wall so that you get that ball to roll right in between the shoulder blade and spine. Dipping your hips down and lifting your hips up, or beginning with that circle making with your arm. Just making this circle with your arm gives you different lines of pull or stretch of the connective tissue. Then go ahead and cross the arm over the torso and lean your body weight over to the side that you're working on and back again. If you're at the floor, I encourage you to switch sides and begin your work there, positioning the ball in between your shoulder blade and spine and making that circular action with your shoulder joint to not only feel for the ball placement, but to start to move the tissues around. Allow yourself to slow down, to enjoy this process, and in that conversation that you're having with your body, to respond honestly. If you've made your way down to the floor and you find that the pressure there is too deep, 
Make your way back to the wall and start in a way that is softer, stays more at the surface, where you can maintain that deep connection with your breath, going along the lines of less is more. Eventually, over time, as we engage with these tools, our tissues become more accepting of that deeper pressure. Give yourself time to reach into those deeper layers. Spend just a few more moments here with whatever technique is currently working for you, maybe at the wall or at the floor, breathing deeply and staying connected and feeling with your body. When we roll with these tools, we're not only addressing the tension that we carry in our tissues and our muscle fibers and the uh, fascia, of course, but we're also communicating with the nervous system. There are millions of nerves embedded within that fascial net so that when we start to relieve tension and stress from our tissues, we can effectively downregulate the nervous system, which is a big part of total body wellness and recovery and healing. Go ahead and take one more breath where you're at. And upon that exhale, I invite you to remove the ball from its location. Return to the place where you arrived for practice, whether that was seated or standing. As we focus back on the body, notice how you feel in body and breath. Observe your perception of your upper back, your neck, your shoulders, and your chest. What shift do you perceive as a result of the work that we've done here today? If you'd like to share in the comments how you feel following our work, I'd love to hear from you. And I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of your practice today on this self-care Sunday, engaging with myofascial release for total body wellness. Please be sure to drink plenty of water today. When we work with these tools, we move a lot of fluid around in the body. Stay hydrated. You can find me here on Instagram at Alyssa Dawn Yoga. And also, I want you to be sure to join or to follow WellSet at WellSet Co. You might also consider visiting WellSet Co or WellSet.co to view their online platform. They are giving HEAL viewers, that's you, a 25% discount on their membership fee and on top of their two-week free trial. All you have to do is go to the website and enter in code HEAL25. And be sure to also stay tuned here on Instagram at HEAL document Documentary for the next Self-Care Sunday on September 17th. Thank you again for being here. Be well.